Hey y'all, no Victorian outfit is complete without a hat. And you know what the best thing is? Hats are easy, instant gratification projects you can completely hand sew in just a couple of days. You may have already seen it, but recently I uploaded a video where I made an 1880s foundation skirt covered in bananas. So when I bought this fabric, I knew that the hat was going to have to have a banana on it with sunglasses. First order of business is to create the brim block. We do this using a standard 10 to 12 inch foam wreath base, which can be bought at any box craft store for a couple of bucks. Place it onto the pattern guideline and mark the centers, sides, and cut marks. This is from Out of a Portrait Patterns. This is a great resource for hats and she makes them for basically every single era ever. Except, you know. This is pattern number 43, the late Victorian tall hat pattern appropriate for the years 1875 to 1885. Once all the pieces are marked, go ahead and cut at all the indicated cut lines, making sure to keep your pieces somewhat organized for reassembly. Replace the pieces as instructed and tape together with masking tape. Note that the angles won't necessarily meet together. That's okay, just cover the gap with tape. Once everything's taped, try it on. We're going for something that perches on top of the head. Nope. Readjust as necessary, making it smaller or larger until you get the correct size. Eh, not quite. 15 minutes later. There we go. This is how much I had to take out to accommodate my tiny head. Cut out a piece of millinery buckram that is about three inches wider than your block all the way around. Millinery buckram has been treated with a glue which, when wet, will shape and form as you wish it to. The pattern calls for a double layer, which I opted against, but I do suggest you double up on this for strength purposes. Cover your block with plastic wrap and moisten your buckram. Then spread it out over one side of the block. Smooth and stretch it out so it has as few wrinkles as possible. This is sticky work, so be aware. I got smart and put something under it. Then, keeping the fabric taut as possible, pin down into the base of your block all the way around. I like to pin one side, then the opposite side, and then work my way around in that manner so that everything stays nice and tight. Now to cut the entry point. Make sure you leave an even two to three inches of seam allowance all the way around. Cut tabs as if you were clipping curves on a seam and press them down into the center of the block. Leave the buckram to dry overnight. Once the buckram is dry, draw a line along the base of the block. I wish I'd made mine a little lower than this. Cut some 18 gauge millinery wire the width of the cut outer edge plus enough so it overlaps by about two inches. Also cut out the crown and crown top pieces. You can see me here adjusting the length of the crown to accommodate my size changes. Note that this hat should fit most head sizes and you probably won't have to do this unless your head fits child size hats like mine does. If you have to adjust the crown, don't forget to also adjust the top. Whip stitch the wire to the top of the brim by hand, or if you're brave, by machine.
repeat for the top of the brim. Overlap the center back of the crown. Then stitch a few X's into the back to hold it in place. Thanks again to all of my Kofi supporters. Y'all are amazing and so very appreciated. If you're finding this video helpful, I've linked to the page in the description below where you can pop over and leave me a one-time tip. Then whip stitch the top of the crown to the crown base. Ta-da! We are assembled. Crown is sewn to the brim. The top is sewn to the crown. She keeps calling it the tip, by the way. And I've gone ahead and covered the wire with some bias tape. And it doesn't matter what color bias tape you use, this is all about to get covered. So, now we get to mull it, which basically means we're going to cover everything with a thick fabric to smooth out all of the edges. She recommends using flannel. I don't have any flannel, but I do happen to have some cotton batting handy because I've been using it for my Renaissance gown. So that's what I'm gonna use. And don't worry, you'll see that Renaissance gown soon. It's almost done. I just have to finish all of these projects first because these have a deadline and that doesn't. All right, let me go grab my spray glue, which I bought for my 1830s bonnet. She calls for using glue, but uh, I will never look back. I will say that the cotton batting and the sticky spray did not behave. I kept getting the sticky spray on my fingers and then the cotton was coming off and I was fuzzy all over. I liked the idea of using cotton because I thought it would be more breathable than poly fleece, but the tip was a little floppy, if you know what I mean. I definitely think that using fleece like I did in my 1830s bat bonnet is the way to go. It was sturdier and worked much nicer with the spray glue. This is the trickiest part. You wanna make the entry hole smaller than the base of the crown so it stretches to fit perfectly. Then make sure you don't overlap the mulling too much on the brim or it'll end up too bulky. I'm opting to use medium gray silk for the base of the hat so it matches both of my bustle gowns. You want to cut out the top of the brim, the crown, and the tip of the hat out of your base color. The underside is a dupioni from Silk Baron called Flamenco, and it's magenta shot with yellow. How delicious is this color? To cover the top of the brim, cut a hole like you did with the mulling, but leave a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance up against the crown. Pin smoothly down all the way around the brim. Clip your curves against the crown. Then fold the fabric to the underside and pin down once again. Then remove, spray with glue, and attach it permanently to the brim, making sure to smooth out all of the wrinkles. Sew the short ends of the underbrim together, then run two sets of gathering stitches along each long end of the band. Pin your centers to the top of the brim, then gather each half to fit. Last night, I sewed on the brim lining and it is just gathered together around the brim and I sewed it 3 8 of an inch away from the end. It's gonna get flipped under like this 
and then we gathered the edge, this edge as well, if you remember. So we're gonna gather that all together and it'll get pinned and sewn, hand sewn in here. And then, believe it or not, we don't have much left to do on this hat before it's ready to be decorated. Woohoo! So we've got the crown piece and the tip that have to get put on and then we'll be ready to uh, bananafy. I did wanna say, and I can't quite make out whether the camera is picking this up well or not, but not only did the spray glue completely not stick to the mulling, it also stained the heck out of my silk. So if you're going to use spray glue, I would test it first. I would have much rather just sewn it off the bat, but I was following the directions. So if I do this again, I would just hand stitch everything down instead of dealing with the spray glue on my silk. I'll cover the tip in fabric and pin it down tightly. Sew it down using a running stitch. Overlap the crown fabric slightly at the center back seam, being sure to leave the seam allowance on the top and bottom of the crown. Then use a running stitch to secure. Pull and smooth the crown fabric around the hat, pinning at the top to keep it secure. Then tuck in the seam allowance on the top, making it flush with the top of the hat. I'm deviating from the instructions here because this feels like a more precise way of sewing. So using the invisible stitch of your choice, I'm opting for the tunnel stitch. Smooth down and tuck the seam allowance on the base of the crown. Carefully tuck in the center back seam allowance, making sure it stays nice and smooth. This can be fiddly, but stick with it, it'll work out eventually. I marked where I wanted the banana to go. Then I took the band and pleated each end. No hat is complete without a few flowers. The majority of these are going to go on my second stripy bustle dress, but I wanted to reserve a few for le chapeau. Decorating a hat is a difficult thing to teach. You gotta really tap into your creativity here. I like to play around with the placement and then leave it somewhere prominent and stare at it for a while. You also wanna try it on with each step. Now we have to line the inside of the hat. You can use whatever you want for this, it'll never be seen. I opted for some of this pink fabric I bought for my bustle overskirt because I'm still suffering under the delusion that I have enough of that fabric to do my whole project. And if you're looking forward to seeing me struggle to make the matching dress for this, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and hit the like button. You can see me wearing it in this shot. Once the lining is assembled, sew it to the inside of the hat, lapping over the raw edge of the brim fabric. Time to bananify! 
I marked where I want the sunglasses to go. The banana is made out of styrofoam, so trying to figure out a way to attach it to the hat without breaking it was kind of a challenge. I spent a good 20 minutes experimenting with floral wire and eventually my hat pin, but the wire was too flimsy. It kept wanting to go out at the wrong angle, and the only other wire I could find in the chaos of my apartment was too thick. I struggled some more before adding a nail and getting one of the bits of wire through. But then I couldn't get the safety pin to stay flush against the banana and you could see it against the hat. So I gave up and just stuck a few straight pins into the banana from the inside before I sewed in the lining. I drew a sunglasses onto a piece of packing foam I found on the floor. Once they were cut out and painted, it was time to attach. A little bit of hot glue and voila, one cool banana. This was such a fun project and a great escape from the struggles that I was having to make the actual bustle gown. I know I've been quiet for a while, frantically trying to get all of this done. So let me know in the comments what you've been up to, what you've been watching, or even what kind of plans you have for this crazy month. I do wish that I'd made the brim a little bit larger as it doesn't quite have the sweep that the original one on the pattern does. And the buckram batting combo was just a little too flimsy to keep the crown nice and straight. But otherwise, I'm so pleased with this thing and it was a huge hit at the event. Thanks for watching. I love y'all and I'll catch you in my next video.